Okay, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, or good evening. We are going to try this real quick. Hopefully everybody will get in this webinar. I am so sorry. I have, we've got to do something with the other system. I just can't, cannot uh, uh, do that every single week. So we're going to have the same exact webinar here. Uh, it's going to be the exact same thing. Um, other pages not work. The other webinar system is just not working. They're doing a bunch of upgrades on it because of uh, Google Live, and so we're just gonna we're gonna get through this, and there will be a uh, opportunity to see it. I'm going in right now uh, to that page, and I can see it broadcasting. Make sure I can hear it. Okay, I can hear it fine. I see people coming in. I'm going to give it just a few minutes for everybody to come in. I'm going to give... Um, Kitty Dutton a call here real quick. And make sure that everybody gets moved over here. I see people checking in. Hey, Daryl Warner, how you doing, buddy? We get this thing rocking and rolling, and get everybody moved over. We're gonna do the same training tonight. I apologize for the. <laughs> I don't know what the heck's going on with the uh, thing. Our jam. They they just literally do something different. Hey, Mark Tolson, how you doing, buddy? We're going to rock and roll. Now, I can see everybody's comments here in the system that I'm in. Uh, I can react to you and uh, and talk to you. And I'm going to give everybody just a few minutes to check in and make sure uh, uh, everybody comes over. I will download this off of Facebook and put it in YouTube. I see a lot of people checking in. I'm so thankful. I apologize for webinar jam. I've got to talk to Woodrow about about that system. It, it does this every other week, and uh, um, it's it's crazy. But I'm going to uh, just hang on here just a minute. Give everybody a chance to move on over. Uh, this is going to be a pretty in-depth training, so I want to make sure that uh, we get it all in. Uh, this will be on Facebook Live. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah I won't tell you what I was saying on this end. <laughs> I was I was using a few expletives, <laughs> you know. And I I just uh, yes, tap on the. Um, Tap on the screen, open up the the video up. Turn up the volume if you're on a computer. That somebody also could relay that. And uh, we're going to start rolling here. Uh, people are moving on over. Uh, we're going to probably go a little bit long. Once again, I apologize for webinar jam. Uh, I just got this program two days ago uh, to start doing some trainings inside App Wizard Studio and uh, just some short stuff. And thank God, man, I, I, I've been trying to get into webinar jam for the last half hour, well, longer than that. But. Um, so hopefully everybody's moved over. Uh, just uh, if you cannot hear me, Kenny Dutton, if you can hear me, if you could just direct them to, they need to open their screen and or turn up their volume if they're on a computer. But we're going to go ahead and get started. I've got the exact same training here uh, that we will ha would have had on the other screen. Uh, so 
Uh, we're good to go, and we're going to rock and roll. Yes, my screen is moving. So we're going to get going. Welcome to the training. Once again, I, I deeply apologize for the uh, web, for webinar jam. We're going to figure that out, and we're going to uh, uh, go ahead and do training here, and I'll download this and put it in Facebook, and we'll make it happen. So let me go ahead and turn off my volume here, and uh, we'll get going. Uh, my name is Kerry Miller. Welcome to our uh, Wednesday night training. Uh, real quick, if you've not uh, joined our Facebook group, join our Facebook group at uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash AWS mastermind. It's a great place to be. I, I'm going to try to calm my anxiety down about 16 here. Real quick, a quick uh, disclaimer watching training. You will make any sales, create any traffic, or increase your income. Every person is different, has different work ethics, and different desires. I want to remind you real quick before we get into this, and I just uh, also to let you know if you have questions, uh, I can uh, uh, see your questions as you type them in the box, and so uh, I can, I'll be able to answer your questions. Unfortunately, my... Uh, Vision on this screen is a little bit different than it is on the other screens. I've got a whole bunch of things going on. But this tool is in your toolbox and should be used in conjunction with the tools you currently use. You still want to build a list. You still need the marketing platform. You still need uh, texting. You still need your mobile web apps. Uh, you need all those things to work into conjunction. And the great thing about this tool is uh, the fact that it does so much without any effort. And what I mean by that is, is and, and I kind of call it, matter of fact, I trademarked this just the other day while I was sitting in the hospital. Uh, I call it the billboard in your pocket. And uh, literally, you can walk around with this little uh, beacon in your pocket and transmit out to people and, and reach out to them and send your mobile web app and advertise your business to people that you otherwise never have been able to touch before. And so they you bring them into your app, now you bring them into your list, and now you can market to them all the time. So when I say I want to remind you that this is a tool in your toolbox, this is a tool in your toolbox, and it's an amazing tool. And... Uh, don't ever, ever, ever think for a second that this alone can do the job of what all the tools can do together. I want you to think of something for a moment. And uh, when, when you're sitting in an in a, in, in ICU, your brain literally goes into overload over time, and, it, and it's just crazy. And I thought about this. You know, this is like the gold rush. Beacon technology is like the gold rush. I mean, it's like they just discovered gold in California in 1849, and everybody will do anything they can to get there. And so this is a very, very ground floor, and you're going to see in a minute when I show you some dates. This is just in the infancy. Just like mobile web apps were in 2012 when Woodrow came up with the idea of the mobile web apps and started developing uh, App Wizard. So this is the same way. And I've talked to several people and they weren't able to uh, bring platforms together with this. And fortunately with, uh, with Mark, we were able to do that. And uh, it, it took, some, took some doing. But we were able to make that happen, and Mark was able to make it happen. All I did was was test it. So, and, and, and many of you tested it, and I greatly appreciate that. You, you have the opportunity right now to take a program that 
is literally going to blow people's minds when you show it to them. I know Roger Pineda has already, he don't even have a beacon yet. Doesn't even, hadn't even seen it work yet. And he's just started telling his clients, hey, I've got this beacon technology that you can literally broadcast your mobile business card out to your customers. And they're saying, when can I get it? He doesn't even have one yet. So just bringing it up is putting the excitement in the air. So App Wizard Studio and Beacon Technology has now merged. It's very simple. It's easy to do. It's uh, that, that little beacon that you see on that screen is about the, a little smaller than a quarter. Uh, I know I've got them sitting all over my house just testing uh, uh, strengths and levels and everything, and you need to do the same thing. Once again, like everything else, do not be afraid of this. Don't be afraid that uh, you're going to get into something that is way over your head. I'll do the over the head for you, okay? I've literally been drenched in, in beacon technology for the last two weeks, studying everything I can. And I'm going even deeper this next week, and I'm going to bring you more and more and, and you're going to be able to just watch how it's done and put it in place. Don't worry about the heavy lifting. Let us hear App Wizard do that for you. Let's talk a little bit about history real quick. And I want to go through this because I want to show you before we dive into uh, setting up the beacon, just how fresh this is. First certified Apple beacon was in September of 2013. That was only four years ago. Okay, Android Beacon Library. Radius Network launches the Android Beacon Library and brings support to the Android ecosystem. And when that happened, that's when they started playing with how can this connect and where does this go? And it was literally all programming. And there was nobody really using it yet. They were trying to figure it out. Then at the... Uh, um, um, Golly, man, my mind just went blank with CES. But that's the uh, Consumer Electronics Show. In 2014, they tested it out. Okay, in January 2014, there was just over a 1,000 beacons and powered the largest beacon-based indoor location system of its time. This was just three years ago, guys. Just three and a half years ago. In 2014, Radius Network authors and uh, uh, authors and releases the first open interoperable proximity beacon specification. So they're just getting the program together in just two and a half years ago. In 2015, okay, in 2015, Eddie Stone and the physical web, and I'm going to talk to you about the physical web and Eddie Stone here in just a minute, but Eddie Stone and the physical web collaborated with a team at Google. Now, I'll tell you something that happened just a year ago. There were several people who were using beacons, and several uh, companies started selling beacon technology. But there was a big barrier in the way. And that barrier was is you had to download external apps in order to make the beacon system work. So Google said, this isn't going to work. And most people don't even know this. And I, I read it on the web. Google shut down the beacon technology for two full months. And people couldn't figure out <coughs> why things weren't working. And what they were trying to figure out is how to get past <coughs> the, uh, the uh, uh, barrier of having to download apps. Google wants you on your phone. They're a, in the phone market now. So what they did was, is they baked in, inside Android, all the technology that was needed to read the beacons without any external downloads. And it comes in as just a simple notification. They know, and I'm telling you, when Google gets on board with something, you know it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. And the only web browser, Safari's online, I'm, I'm sorry, um, um, Firefox is online. Uh, of course, Google Chrome is online. The uh, 
Android browser is baked in with this technology and they're working now with iPhone to bake the technology into Safari. When that opens up, it's going to be amazing what happens. Now you can use the Beacon apps right now with iPhones. I have an iPhone 7. I use and test my apps all day long with the technology. The physical web. Let's talk about the physical web for a moment. I want to educate you a little bit because setting them up isn't a big deal. But you need to be educated when you go out and speak to people just in case they say, well, you know, I've heard of this, but what is the physical web? The physical web is an effort to extend the superpower of the web, the URL to everyday physical objects. Now, I want you to think of this, okay? It's not going to be long where these Eddie Stone apps are built into cars, boats, signs, everything out there. They're going to be there, okay? Somebody like us is going to go out and sell this technology to somebody because somebody's got to sell it. And what's going to happen is, is all this stuff is going to be baked into everything, okay? And with the physical web, you can literally attach an object like a beacon, okay? All a beacon is is a small object, and I'm going to show you inside and out of one in just a moment. And to everyday physical objects, our premise is that you should be able to walk up to any smart physical object, a vending machine, a poster, a toy, a bus stop, a rental car, and interact with it without first downloading an app. And if you'll see here, this is the physical web icon right here on top. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse or not moving. Down here, this is my notifications on my iPhone, and every time I walk in the house, they pop up, and uh, these are the two apps that I have attached to it, okay? This isn't actually a website, and this is my mobile app that goes to this website. So when I walk in, even though I'm on an iPhone, <coughs> with an iPhone, if you have notifications turned on and Google Chrome, it works, okay? All you do is add it. What are beacons? Beacons are small Bluetooth sensors that allow you to provide location-based content or services. A beacon can be installed in or outdoors on stationary or movable objects, turning them into IoT-capable devices. This way, you can target specific zones around the objects with up to 80 meters. Okay, that's about, what, 250 feet? There's 3.2 meters to a... Uh, to a uh, 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 there's 3.2 feet to a meter so beacons and beacons run on batteries or can be integrated into objects that already tap into an energy source you can literally get uh, beacons that little little goggles and plug them right into a power source plug them into a business and it's transmitting okay there's several different types of beacons but the one we're going to be looking at is the one that you see right down here in the right hand corner it's called a Rad Beacon Dot. Very inexpensive, very powerful technology. I've already tested it up to 75 feet, okay? And it picked up absolutely perfect. What is IoT? The Internet of Things, okay? The Internet of Things is the internetworking of physical devices, vehicles also referred to as connected devices, and smart devices. So the little beacon is an internet of things, okay? It's an internet working of physical devices. Buildings and other items embedded, okay, with electronics, software, sensors, actuators, network connectivity, which enable these objects to collect and exchange data. Your opportunities here are, I, I could have I could have wrote this for like days, okay? First off, engage your customers and visitors through context-based and personalized content. Coupons. Games. Anything that you can put in your mobile web app, you can push out to your, uh, your clients can push out to their customers, and you can push out to your customers using this little beacon. Activate customers at offline touch points. Okay? When, when, when you walk up to something, and they're, let's say you're in a store and you got a pair of shoes that are on sale and they want to make sure that people that walk in see those shoes that are on sale. 
literally you can put that beacon by those shoes and when somebody walks into that area depending on what the power of the beacon is they're going to get a notification that says hey get 10 percent off of these shoes or it could say hey buy these shoes and get 10 percent off of a new dress the technological ability of these things just are amazing and mind-blowing okay mind-blowing platform overview Beacons are one-way transmitters that are used to mark important places and objects. Very small, low energy. Uh, the batteries in these things, depending on how, how, how the, high the power is, can last up to two years. Typically, a beacon is visible to a user's device from a range of a few meters, allowing for highly context-sensitive use. Okay? So, if you're going into a store... And you want to set up 10 of these things. You want to bring the power back. And as they walk close to those different beacons, it will set off their notifications on their phone. And you can see when we go through it in a minute, I want to show you how to set up the power. Google's beacon platform is designed to make it easy to incorporate these kind of use cases into your own apps and venues, whether or not you maintain a widely distributed app. All right. So there again, you don't need the Google Play Store anymore. <laughs> I mean, Google Play, that's why, and, and, and my hat's off to Woodrow. When he had the idea of the mobile web app back in 2012, okay, and the platform that he built with App Wizard Studio, it was genius because that is why we see native apps for businesses slipping by the wayside. This is an opportunity for the mobile web app business to absolutely explode. Eddie Stone format. First and foremost, Eddie Stone came from a uh, lighthouse, okay, on a rock in the UK, okay, and it was called Eddie Stone. And so they brought on this, this company and said, hey, you know what? A small light of beacon allows people and shows people exactly where to go with just a small burst of light, and it does its job. It's an open beacon format developed by Google and designed with transparency and robustness in mind. Eddie Stone can even be detected by both Android and iOS devices. The Eddie Stone format builds on lessons learned from working with industry partners and in existing deployments as well as the wider beacon community. Several different types of payload can be included in the frame format, including Eddie Stone UID, and I'm, I'm studying UID right now. Eddie Stone telemetry, which is used a lot in uh, transportation companies and that kind of stuff, showing them where their vehicles are, what speed they're going, uh, when they're going to get to their next destination, those kind of things. Uh, really not going to get into any Eddie Stone telemetry at all. Eddie Stone EID. But what we're focused on right now will be the Eddie Stone URL, a compressed URL that once parsed and decompressed is directly usable by the client. Little signal goes out, the Bluetooth picks it up, the phone says, hey, here's a notification, this is what's happening right in front of you. We at AWS, and I say we, Mark, <laughs> programmed and made available the ability to connect using the Eddie Stone URL technology to your mobile apps to the Eddie Stone BLE beacon, okay? And BLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy, all right? So literally, when you walk by, you're going to get a notification. You click on that notification, and your app opens up. It's just that simple. And when you get your beacons in, You'll be like me. All you do is sit around and play with beacons and see how far they'll transmit and how far they'll do all that stuff. But we now have the ability to attach our mobile web apps to these Eddie Stone beacons. Programming your Eddie Stone beacon, what do you need? First off, you need a beacon, okay? And uh, you can get them from Radius Networks. Uh, some of you are probably going to ask... Uh, Hey, Kerry, can I buy them from somewhere else? Yes, there's many places you can buy them from. They range anywhere from, from uh, 
radius from about 10 bucks and I've seen them for 60 bucks and I've seen them for 200 bucks. You decide which ones you want and you buy the ones that you want. And each company has their own uh, interface, their own mobile app that you can program them with. Okay. The radius beacon is what I'm going to be teaching you. Why? Because they're inexpensive. They're easy to program. They work with our apps and they're easily to deploy. You will need a mobile phone, Android or iPhone with Bluetooth. You will need a configuration app and I'm going to show you the configuration app from Radius Networks. And if you'll notice Radius Networks, the, the reason I, I pinged on Radius Networks is because they were in the early development of Beacon technology. Uh, you, know, you need a mobile web app and you need a mobile web app URL and you're in business. Number one, what's a beacon? Red Beacon Dot is a fully standalone, and this is the beacon that I'm using right here, and I know a lot of you are using these beacons. Red Beacon Dot is a fully standalone Bluetooth smart proximity beacon using iBeacon, Alt Beacon, and Eddy Stone technology implemented in a lightweight package that is powered by a battery. You don't have to plug it up. All you have to do is take it out of the package. You turn it on, press for four seconds, activate it, program it, and you're done. It's the perfect beacon for conferences, trade shows, exhibits, and other events where power may not be readily available and ultimate flexibility and placement is most important. And this is the website right here, okay? Radius Beacon, uh, I'm sorry, RadiusNetworks.com. It's the world's first multi-beacon, this rad beacon right here, as the industry's first multi-beacon with concurrent support for all major industry standard proximity technologies, the Rad Beacon Dot enables simultaneous proximity services across iOS, Android, and other emerging mobile environments. Supported Beacon proximity technologies include iBeacon, AltBeacon, Eddystone, and Eddystone URL, which is what we are focusing on tonight. Rad Beacons, they go anywhere. And I told you earlier, I have trademarked a billboard in your pocket, and I am pushing it very, very, very hard right now. Rad Beacon Dot is packaged in a lightweight plastic enclosure and powered by a user-replaceable CR2032 coin cell battery. It can be flexible, uh, flexibly installed in any location regardless of available power and provides proximity interactions engagements for mobile applications compatible with once again, iBeacon, AltBeacon, and Eddystone micro location technology. Certified and licensed. Rad Beacon Dot is an iBeacon licensed product that is fully FCC, IC, and CE certified. Uh, certified and licensed, and I've already said that. And ultimate configurability. Using Radius Network's free tools, including Rad Beacon Config App. You have unrestricted ability to configure your Rad Beacon Dot with whatever identifiers you prefer, as well as adjust broadcast frequency and power. You can go every one second. You can go uh, broadcast it seven times a second. You can broadcast it a hundred times a second. You have that set up. And uh, uh, let me see. I don't think so. To be honest with you. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. I just got this system and just actually started using using this for here. I don't think I can. I'll figure that out in case we have to use this again or when I do use this again. I don't believe I can, buddy. I can't see that, but I know what you're talking about. If you want to get other beacons, you can definitely do that. Here are a lot of Google approved beacons. Just go to de developers.google.com forward slash beacons. I don't make anything from uh, Radius Networks. I don't, I'm not promoting a Radius Networks. That's just the networks that I'm, that, that's just the network that I'm purchasing from, mostly because of the price. Okay. All right. Secondly, you need a mobile phone, okay, Android or iPhone with Bluetooth, all right? It doesn't matter what phone you have. If you have, if it's Bluetooth compatible and it's Android or iPhone, 
you can download their app all right and you're able to go in and you're able to take that app and you're able to configure these beacons all right so uh i, I don't know who just posted the thing about this what happens when you buy something from somebody else but I, I really don't want to de degradate anybody else's program in here. <laughs> that's one reason I don't like doing this on Facebook. But uh, that's not what we're here for. All right, we're here to teach and uh, uplift. We're not here to degradate and take away from. So, but you need a mobile phone, Android or iPhone with Bluetooth. Okay, and you can see here. Here's an iPhone, Samsung, Sony, Nokia, and an HTC. So any phones uh, are possible to use. Configuration app. You can use this on a Mac, okay? If you've got a Mac and it's uh, uh, if it's compatible, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But you can see here the I, the phone. You can do it right on your phone. You can do it on an iPad uh, if you if your iPad is Bluetooth compatible. I'll show you in a minute where my uh, compatibility with my next book. <laughs> I turned it on the other day just to see if it would work, and sure enough, the uh, the notification popped right up. The Rad Beacon app provides the following capabilities, scans for configurable beacons, uh, display settings, update settings, reset to, reset to factory settings, lock your settings. Let me talk about locking your settings for just a moment. Once you have your phone set up, I mean, I'm sorry, your beacon set up and it's good to go, you've got everything in it that you're ready to do, lock that beacon because you don't want anyone else to have the ability to go in while they're driving down the road and say, oh my gosh, that's in configurable mode and uh, <laughs> I'm going to change it to my uh, URL. So make sure you lock it before you deploy them. Uh, you're able to reboot to DFU mode, uh, calibrate measured power, iOS only, and measure proximity, iOS only. Okay, and that's just a piece of the app. And I'm going to show you why because I've got an iPhone. The mobile web app. You just simply need to build out your mobile web app, and I'm going to show you in a, more, in a moment just how important this copy code is because we do use a different URL, okay? We use a different URL than the OneTap.Mobi, and the reason we do that is is because these have to be HTTPS, and uh, they have to be on a secure server, and you cannot do it unless they are. Find the mobile web app URL copy code. This copy code right here, this is the URL you will use. It will be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash two tap dot mobi forward slash copy code. Okay, so here's an example of this app right here, the Cafe Mexicano, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash two tap dot mobi seven six seven eight. This is the URL that you will place into your configure app okay and I'll show you that in a moment where you're going to put that that's the URL that you will place in there now I've talked to probably 10 people that have gotten their beacons since uh, last week when I put out radius networks and they would call up and say okay this isn't working and they go back in and they guess what they forget to put the S why because we're not used to doing that you know and so they put the S in there and then the next thing you know they message me and say oh my gosh it's working I just got my first I just got my first notification so uh, you have to use the s trust me i've done it also i did it today and i've programmed 50 of these things so far so uh but make sure you put the https two tap dot moby and the copy code the copy code is on the app now 1.0 apps and this question is going to come up okay this question is going to come up on the what if you have your own URL, what do you mean? You mean you're an enterprise and you've got your own um, domain name attached to your apps? If that's what you're asking, still use the HTTPS 2 tabmobi That's already been programmed in. Uh, that's all been checked. They also work with uh, CNAME. If you've got your own domain name hooked up to your app, uh, CNAME then uh, it works with that. Matter of fact, Dennis Gray, I tested out your wife's app um, because I knew that you had attached a CNA to her app and it worked perfectly. So, uh, HTTPS 2 tap dot mobi forward slash copy code. Okay. Now, <laughs> let's put it all together. 
And uh, this is the fun part, and it's very, very easy. But you have your beacon, okay? You have your config app, all right? And you have your um, mobile web app. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, these are going to be screenshots because I, I didn't have the capability of doing the videos on the other webinar system, and I definitely don't have it, the ability to do it on here. For the training that you signed up for, the uh, Beacons to Go training that I'm giving everybody that's in Instant App Wizard, uh, just go into the group and you'll be able to sign up until Saturday about 11 o'clock uh, for free. Um, there's actually going to be videos, over-the-shoulder videos of me actually doing this. So make sure you sign up for that training. Sorry, I'm not going to post it here because this is on the open Facebook. And I am going to sell that course. Okay, here's a beacon. Now, I told you, I got all the way off in mine. I took mine apart and tore it up in the whole nine yards. And I will tell you, I, I posted in the group, this is cat proof. Uh, I left it on the counter. And uh, no, the config app is free. The config app is free. You just go to uh, the Apple Store and or Google Play and download the config app for free. The only cost is the beacons. If you buy one beacon, it's 14 bucks. If you buy 100 beacons, it's $10 a piece. So even at $14, the cost is negligible. Uh, and, and next week, we're not going to talk about uh, deployment and costing this week. Uh, we will on next week's training. There's just not enough hours in, in a training to be able to do that. But you can see here, this is the app, and literally the cap just pops off. You can see the little notch right here, okay? The little notch right here, there's a little notch in the microchip that's underneath this metal, and this metal is actually what is clickable that actually turns the app on, turns it off, and uh, puts it in configure mode. And uh, you're going to see here, I'm going to press this without the lid on just so that you can see the lights and you can see how it works. But you don't have to take this off in order to configure it, okay? So here's the, here's the top part. Here it is taken out. Uh, the notch is right here. You can see where the notch goes. So if you take these apart, you say, oh, gosh, how am I going to put this back together to make sure it's in the right place? They thought of that. They know people do, so they take the notch off, okay? So you turn it on, and you can see this was just one strobe right here, so I actually just physically turned it on. And, uh, and right here, you push down and you hold for four seconds. So you go from off to on, press down and hold for four seconds, okay? And um, it's in configuration mode. And you can see here, right here, when you turn it off, it's red, okay? It's red when you turn it off. So this is on. You can see it's blinking because you can see the multiple strobes when I had my camera on. And uh, just so you push it down for four seconds. When it strobes like that, you'll see about four or five strobes. It's in configuration mode. Okay, it's in configuration mode. So now you're ready to come over. And once you've held it down for four seconds, you're going to open up the Rad Beacon app, and it says Rad Beacon. It's the Rad Beacon Configure app, okay? When you open that up, there's not going to be anything here unless you've got a bunch of beacons that you've been configuring, and it's already open, all right? So you're going to open it up, and then you're simply going to pull down on it. Just take your finger and pull down on it, and it's going to populate. It's going to reach out, and you'll see your beacon start to flash, Okay, very rapid flash, maybe 10, 15, 20 times. What that's doing is, is that's connecting to, okay, your, your beacon. Now it's in configuration mode when you see it come up right here. Now, when it comes up right here, you simply want to take this and click on it, okay? And when you click on it, it comes up where you configure everything. Now, you're going to see here, here's iBeacon. Here's Alt Beacon. Here's Eddie Stone UID. Here's Eddie Stone UI URL. This is the button that we're going to be concerned with. Now, if you come in and you uh, don't have one of these pushed, it's going to tell you at least one beacon must be enabled. So what you want to do is, is you want to turn off uh, the iBeacon after you initiate 
the Eddie Stone URL switch. So just turn on the Eddie Stone URL and turn off the iBeacon. Okay. Once you do that, now you're into the configuration section of the app. Now, I know this is going to be tough and this is going to be hard, <laughs> but you're simply going to type in your URL right here. And if you'll notice, it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash Google. This is a Google shortener. Okay. I used a Google shortener. Now, I can tell you, I tested multiple shorteners today, uh, a dozen of them. I could not get one of them to be recognized. No, you can have them all in configuration mode, but just make sure you know which one is which if you've got multiple open at a time. I do them one at a time because I'm uh, I'm not sure what that's called. I can't I can't process everything at the same time. So if I don't do it one at a time, I'll have to go back and reconfigure every single beacon because I'm not going to know which one is which. So. But simply put your URL in here, okay? And now we're going to come up. Now, remember, in iOS, okay, in, in, in the iPhone, okay, uh, in the iPhone, you can go in and calibrate, and you can check the range. So we're going to go in, and we're going to go ahead and calibrate this app. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. Out of all the apps I've calibrated, this goes anywhere. And I think Milan's Goins is on here, so he, he can uh, he can tell you what his calibrates out at. But these usually calibrate anywhere from 35, minus 35 to about a minus 50. Okay, somewhere in between there. Okay. Uh actually I've get I've gone away from the Google shortener completely, and I want to show you at the end of training how to set up your uh, analytics. So you can get all the information. Uh, Google Shorter, the only thing it's going to show you is a click-through. And I want a little more data than that. So I've, I've started, for this training, I, this was two days ago when I started putting this together. Uh, I, I was using the Google Shorter. You can use the Google Shorter, but I can tell you not every shortener is recognized by the beacon. So, and I'm going to tell you why Google Shortener is. Because it's a Google product. What does that mean, Google Shorter? If you go to goo.gl, you can put your URL in, and it will shorten the URL. Now, the reason we went with twotap.mobi forward slash the copy code, you're limited with the size of the URL right here. Okay? You're limited with the size of the URL. So... Oh, minus 45, minus 50. This is your calibrated power. So uh, I can tell you now, minus 35, I already know, will go out to um, about 10 to 15 meters. That's uh, 30 to 45 feet, okay, consistently. These are good for up to 70 to 80 feet. I've just not walked that far uh, to, to test it that far. Mylins, how far have you gone with yours? Uh, uh, with your power, what with your power setting? So, so the lower the power setting, the shorter the distance. The shorter the distance. But this is the calibration, calibrated power. This is the emission that the beacon actually puts out and controls the distance of the radius of the beacon. Okay, did I did I answer that? I won't go any further until I make sure I answer that and everybody understands that. I'm not sure what the delay is on this, but um, I want to answer the questions as we go. That's very important to me. So the calibrated power is just the power of the beacon based on the radius it is. Uh, 35 to 50, I can tell you, is good for, I think the other day when I measured how far I walked, I just did it with stepping, it was about 75 feet, okay? But everything else I've done has been within 30 to 50 feet. Uh, one meter is 3.2 feet. So if you've ever run a 5, 000, a, a 5K, that's 5,000 meters. That's about, what, a uh, mile and a half, a little more than a mile and a half, about two miles or something like that. Okay. So now we're going to come over and we calibrate it. Okay. And here's what the calibration looks like. 
It says, hold this one meter away from the beacon being calibrated. So what you want to do is you want to, I, my arm, I fear, is about three feet. So I simply pick my phone up, and you only can do this with iPhone. If you have Android, you're not going to have to worry about this. So I'm going to, I pick up my phone, and I literally hold it up. Yeah, 5K is 3.2 miles. Um, and so, because, it, yeah, it's 3.2 feet per meter. So that's, that, that's right. So anyway, you want to uh, hold it up about three feet, okay? And that was my killer, Cahill that answered that. He's a, he's a runner, so he would know. And hold it up three, uh, three feet, press it, and it will calibrate. It takes about a minute, something like that, maybe a little longer. Once it's calibrated, everything's good. Okay, this calibrated in at minus 35. I typed in minus 35, all right? And I'm going to come in, and I'm going to hit apply. Now, when you get these, you're going to kind of freak you say, oh, my gosh, what is this? What? Just put in all zeros, eight zeros, and hit apply settings. It's going to take you back here, and your beacon is set up. It's done. And literally, I know I took 15 or 20 minutes talking about that, but literally in less than five minutes, you've got it set up. Now, I will tell you, sometimes you might have to press it two or three times. Uh, and I have found that taking off that little plastic top, it's even faster because you're pressing plastic, pressing down onto... Um, Okay, there you go. minus 35 calibrated power, five advertising rate, minus three is about 100 feet. So there you go. And he's got a lot of these out, so that's 100 feet, which is, that's a, that's a pretty good distance. That's a, that's a, that's a long ways. I, let, me, let me answer Todd Holsey's because we're finished with the setup, okay? Here we go. I put a beacon in a pair of blue jeans inside of a wooden drawer with quarter inch sides on it because my I, i've told you several times my whole thing is you've got a billboard in your pocket and i wanted to see if that billboard was actually going to transmit even through blue jeans okay and my my rates were let me see if i can go back up here y'all have to excuse me here i don't know how to this is an actual pdf right here that i'm using so yeah, almost a football field. I walked outside of my house. I was on the front porch. I was about 40 feet away from the drawer that my pants were in, inside of the wooden drawer with the quarter-inch sides, and I got the signal. Now, things that will limit it is metal. Okay, I don't have a lot of metal in my house. It's all, it's all but metal is going to limit that. It's going to limit it. But at 40 feet, I was able to pick it up. So if you're in a brick building that's got metal in the walls, I recommend putting a beacon by the front door. Okay? Recommend putting a beacon by the front door. Now, I'll show you a couple of, uh, couple of things on the... Uh, you can see here, here's the physical web symbol. Okay? Now, this is a beacon symbol here, but this is a physical web symbol because this is being picked up on an iPhone notification. So they use the physical web symbol on an iPhone notification. Uh, you can see here the 2tap.mobi and the short code. I'm sorry, the copy code. This actually goes to a website here. And if you'll notice on the website, I had to make it HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash so that it would work with the beacons. Okay. And over here, this is an Android phone. And matter of fact, this was uh, this was the first day I had the beacons. And you can see here it opens 2tap.mobi forward slash 7C, whatever, 7CA4. That's what I was testing, okay? Now, this is on a, a Nexus tablet, a Nextbook tablet. Up here, you can see the uh, notification. And I came down, and there's the notification there. Of course, the next tablet has Bluetooth on it. Okay? So, um, that's what it looks like. That's what the notification looks like. Now, 
when I set up my Android phone, and it's a cheap little phone, it's 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 one of those pay-as-you-go phones. Uh, when I set that up, it worked immediately. I didn't turn anything on. I didn't I didn't do anything, but make sure the Bluetooth was on. As soon as uh, as soon as the Bluetooth was on, it picked up the broadcast. Now I was talking to Mylon, and he said pretty much the same thing. He said you may have to turn on nearby. Uh, and one other, I don't remember what the other thing was. Oh, notifications on Chrome. You may have to turn those two things on, but on the Android phones, that already comes turned on on the new phones. Okay? That already comes on on the new phones. And I would be willing to bet, because Google is really pushing this hard right now, that on the next phones that come out over the next year, you're not going to be able to turn any of this off. And this notification technology is only going to get better. Okay, questions and answers here before we uh, before we roll on any more. Uh, I, I, we're going to go into uh, Google Analytics, so don't go anywhere. We're not done. Okay, I just want to make sure that I answer any questions. Okay, I, uh, Mana says they don't pick up uh, pick up if trying to test in a car. Okay. Now we'll pick up if the windows is down because the first pickup I had was at Subway by someone that I met for dinner and uh, she got out of her car and she said, you're not going to believe this. Uh, your, your app just came across my dad thing. All right. Any questions at all on the beacons? I want to get these out of the way real quick first. And we're going to go into that 10 minutes of Google Analytics. I'm going to show you how to set that up. Okay. I need to plug my computer in real quick because I just noticed the battery is just about down. All right. Any questions? I was thrown outside a window. When you ask any limit, what do you mean? Is there any limit? Any limit to the number of beacons you can have on an app? No. Any limit to the number of beacons you can put in a building? No. There's no limit to this. There's no limit to this. Zero limit to this. Okay. I'm going to continue on here since we kind of got started late because of webinar jam was down once again. And uh, let's, let's continue to roll on. Setting up Google Analytics. You can use the Google Shortener, G-O-O.G-L, okay? That does work. Uh, I have tested it. I've tried it. I tried teeny.cc, teenyurl.cc. Would not pick up on the beacons. Uh, I tried uh, Bitly. Uh, Bitly's pretty much burnt. Uh, wouldn't pick up on the beacons. I tried Brantley. Would not pick up on the beacons. Um Hootsuite would not pick up on the beacons. Uh, I, I can't. I, I, I tried many. Okay, all day today. Matter of fact, I spent two hours trying this. All right. Google Analytics. Google Analytics has changed an awful lot. Okay. As a matter of fact, since I cut the slides two days ago, they changed their UI, and I had to cut new slides right before training started. So. Uh, but you've got to have a Google account, all right? You have to have uh, a Google account, all right? So what's going to happen is, is you're going to go into your analytics account. You've got to have a Google account, and you're going to go down here into admin. Now you can see when I uh, I did when I first set this up, there was no, there wasn't any apps open. And you're going to see as I go through this, I've got an app open. I'm going to go into admin. I'm going to just click on admin. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to drop this box down and I'm going to create a new account. When you go to admin, this is the page that is opened up. Okay. I'm going to come down. I'm going to go create a new account. Now, Google gives you 100 per um, account that you have. So if you've got multiple email addresses you've got plenty you don't have to worry about it but this is free you don't have to pay for it so we're going to create a new account oops 
okay? And you're gonna need two things on this. You're gonna need the name of the app and you're gonna need the URL of the app. This is not the twotap.mobi. Immediately. When you change the URL on your beacon, it changes immediately. Immediately. Okay, for the, uh, uh, back to Google Analytics, and that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Back to Google, you're going to need the name of the app, and you're going to need the URL. This is not the 2tap.mobi URL. This is the actual URL of the app. Okay, you're going to come in. You're going to put the name right here. Uh, the website name, uh, this is the account name. This is the website name, Susan Over and Realtor Howard Hanna. Okay, this is the website URL, getdigi.mobi forward slash Susan Overton. Uh, this happens to be on the uh, Eastern Time Zone, so I'll put it on the Eastern Time Zone. The category is real estate. All right, so just simply come down. Uh, I don't check or uncheck all this stuff. I leave it just like it is because I like keeping stuff simple. Get tracking ID. I've got, you've got to accept this. If you do not accept this and you think that somebody's uh, watching you, if you do, you got to accept it in order to get the data that you need. So click accept. And this script right here, from script to script, not the tracking ID, not the PHP. Uh, I have a lot of people call, and this is what they always put in there, the PHP. It's not the PHP. Uh, get the website tracking script, okay? And you're going to copy this. <clears throat> Just simply click on it, right click, and we're going to go into the web app. Just simply click on edit web app, go into settings. You're going to come down to Google Analytics. Now, this is another big mistake, and this happens a lot, okay? This happens a lot. And next week, I'm going to show you how to use third party code for uh, Facebook tracking. So that when these people go in, they can use Facebook to go out and advertise right to these folks. Okay. I just typed something in there. I don't know what I typed. I just hit a bunch of keys. I can show y'all uh, questions. Look at there. It's ugly Kenny Dutton. This is a pretty cool technology right here in itself. Okay, so we come down to Google Analytics. Okay, come down to Google Analytics Stats. You're simply going to paste this in the Google Analytics just like it is. Do not backspace. Don't change anything. Don't touch this script. Paste it in. Let it populate. Hit save. Google Analytics code is saved. Okay, now while I was doing that, I had the app opened. Okay, I had the app open, and right here you can see that the app was open. One page view, all right? Now you can come down and you can watch in real time. Now I can tell you this becomes a bad habit, <laughs> a very bad habit. So what happens here is, is this is real time. You can literally watch everything happen. You can see where it's coming from. You can see what the traffic source is. You can see what the content's being shown. Okay, uh, I happened to open it up to the email page because I wanted to make sure it was showing each page within the app. So I clicked on the email button and uh, there's the email right there. Okay, that shows that I was on Susan Overton and the email page, all right? And then, that I don't know if you've ever known this. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me go back. Google's analytics are about one day behind except real time. So a lot of the data doesn't populate until the next day. Matter of fact, they've got, uh, when you go into Google Analytics and you go into audience and you start looking at everything, it's usually a day behind. But real time is right now. This is right now. This is happening right this very second. Okay? So you set up your Google an Analytics, you put it in your app, and you're done. Now you can track. Maybe maybe you've got a beacon that's set up specifically for coupons, okay? And that's the only way it's going out. And then you've got another um, coupon.
coupon set up for specifically texting. And you, you set that up on a different app so that you can track and you can you can see exactly what everything's happening and what everything is doing. Don't be afraid to test things. Okay? Don't be afraid to build two different apps, two different coupon pages using two different apps and attaching URLs to those so that they can be tracked separately so you know what's paying off the most. Maybe you want to use texting for one, email for one, and we're going to get in deep into that next week. Okay? Kenny Dutton, I'm going to show you what he said. He said he's not seeing it. <laughs> okay? So, any questions at all? At all? Before we close down, I'm, a, I'm we've, I've got plenty of time. I know it's 9.15. Still took us an hour, which is amazing. I'm not sure if I missed any questions going through. I tried to catch them. Pretty simple for everybody. Pretty easy to, to do. I'm going to start using this program more in, um, in the Facebook group and do, do some trainings in there, just some periodic tra trainings. Pretty cool program. The people that created this is really cool. Once you get your beacons, you guys are going to find that once you get your beacons, um, it's not as hard as you think. I mean, it's very, very easy to do. What will be the easiest way to make money with this? Charge $109 a year for it, stick an app on it, and go out there and sell the technology. Literally, listen, listen what I'm fixing to say. Get you a beacon now. They're 14 bucks. Attach texting to your app. So do these two things. Build your app if you've not built one. Okay. Um, yes. Don't. Yeah. Do it in Facebook. I mean, in the group. I don't look at the page very often. Put texting on your app, build your app, put texting on your app, order your beacon, it comes in about two days, set up your beacon, walk out the door and go show people how the beacon is transmitted to your phone, open it up, ask them what their phone number is, show them how fast they get a text message and exactly how the entire circle, okay, the marketing circle works together. I will tell you now, if you aren't demonstrating apps, you're not going to sell any apps. You can't sit on your butt at the house, and you cannot expect to demonstrate an app if you don't go out and show it. And if you don't have the tools attached to it to show it, you're probably not going to sell absolutely nothing. And I cannot be any more frank than that. And if it hurts somebody's feelings, I'm sorry. It's just the truth. You don't have to register the beacons with Google. No, 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 no. The beacons are $14 one time. This is not uh, any of the programs you've seen out there. You're buying these direct from the sales, uh, from the people that build them, okay, direct from the company that builds them. It's a one-time $14, and the beacons, uh, you know, you can change the batteries out in a year or so. Where do you get them from? Radius. Let me go back to the beacons up here. Sorry, folks. RadiusNetworks.com. 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 Let me type that in real quick. Hang on just one second. I can type that in somewhere here.
There you go. Radiusnetworks.com is where you buy the beacons from. Yep, store dot. Yep, once you click on the store button, it goes to the store button. Ed said he just bought his. Guys, uh, let me let me just go ahead and put the disclaimer out there. I'm not part of Radius Network. App Wizard's not part of Radius Network. This just happens to be the company I found that had the best prices, and they were the first with uh, they were the first with uh, building this technology. So. I put I typed it in right above it. You should see it right above it. I'll figure out how to get rid of that screen side. I don't have a clue how to do that, so I just got this program yesterday. But it's radiusnetworks.com. And you should see a big red thing right across there that says radiusnetworks.com. There's somebody else put it in there too. Mine goings put it in there, radiusnetworks.com. Any other questions? Any other questions? I have a question. How was this little Facebook thing? How was the Facebook uh, video training? Uh, was it pretty clear? I mean, I'm just running from a cloud-based platform right through Facebook Live that allows me to share a screen. And uh, I've not seen it other than bring it up on my phone, make sure it's broadcast, and then I turn that off. But this is a pretty cool little program. It does a lot more. I'm actually on camera too, but my hair is a mess. <laughs> Any more questions before we jump off here? I will figure out how to download this and upload it to YouTube and Kenny Dutton will go in and time frame it or whatever you call it. I uh, see Mylans didn't spell it right. So let me take that off there. It's radiusnetworks.com. Let's see. That little symbol still in the way. I'll figure out how to hide that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out, and uh, is it secure just for us? Is what secure just for AWS? What do you mean, is it secure for AWS? Cool. Awesome, awesome. I really like it. I'm going to do a lot of training with it. Let me put Kenny up there. He typed that in again. Uh, hang on a second. Somebody said they texted me a question. Sorry about that. My phone was turned off. So is this going to be a free service that AWS is going to offer? For those who are currently a member of App Wizard Studio, okay, and we haven't set a date and time yet, but for those, you will be grandfathered in, but this will be a paid program. All right, we will, this will be a paid program. You will be our beta testers. <laughs> and it's going to go somewhere around 49 bucks a month when it, when it comes out. So now everybody's notifications are coming in. Yeah, yeah, it, you'll be. Yeah, it'll be a lot cheaper price for those that are currently in when when we set all that up.
Absolutely, Dennis. I tell you what, thank you for letting me use your app. I can't tell you how long it's going to be free. I can't tell you how long it's going to be free. Once you set your beacons up, you're good. It'll be, it'll be, I recommend that you set up as many beacons as you can. I'm not completely discussed that with uh, Woodrow yet, so. But there will be a fee. All right, there will be a fee. Any more questions? It's active right now. This is active in your platforms right now. I recommend you order some beacons tomorrow. Oh, no, anybody can see this training. Thank you, thank you. Everybody saying thank you. Hey, I'm just, I'm so thankful that I had this, man. I just bought this yesterday. So I, I bought it specifically to do trainings within the group, and I'm just so thankful that I had it. So thankful I had it. All right, guys, what do you recommend to charge the client for this service? $19.99 a month or $109 a year? $19.99 a month or $109 a year? That's my pricing. I can tell you that right now. Thank you, Janine. It's good to have you guys back, too. We've missed you guys. All right, everybody. Everybody have a great evening. God bless you. I will download this. I hope I can download this. If not, this will stay in the App Wizard page. This isn't going anywhere in the App Wizard page. This will stay in the App Wizard page. So uh, whatever you guys Whatever you guys uh, want to watch this, you can watch it all night long. All night long. All right. We will see you guys uh, in the next training, and hopefully Webinar Jam will work. If not, we do have a backup now, fortunately. And if, if we ever have to go again, we'll just say go to the Facebook group, and we'll be here. I was actually in the training room. I could not get the screen, the microphone, or anything else to connect to webinar jam and it would not broadcast so all right everybody good night